Welcome to Excel and Business Math video number 19. Hey, in this video, we got to talk about how to round a percent using the round function and our knowledge of facade number formatting. Now, here are the topics we're going to cover. And rounding a percent is one of those tasks in Excel that trips a lot of us up. And the reason that it trips us up is because we're often given percentages. And it's communicated to us how to round in terms of the percentage. So someone might ask, please round to the percentage point position. Well, the problem with that is you can't rely on that position with the round function. You have to actually look underneath at the non-formatted number to pick the right position to round to. So we'll see in this video how to round to a percent, a tenth of a percent, a hundredth of a percent. And we'll get to see for the first time a change in value formula and a rate of change formula in a stock example where we have to figure out how much the stock changed in value and then figure out what the rate of change or rate of return is while rounding to the nearest hundredth of a percent. Now, we want to start off by going to the sheet position and remind ourselves of a PDF note we saw last video. When we format a percent like this, this is 1.3%. That position right there is really the ones position when we're thinking about it as a formatted percent or the single percentage point position or you might hear it communicated round to the nearest percent. That position right there is the tenths position for our formatted percent. And we always have to remember the difference between the number and the formatted percent. Here it is, ones, tenths. But really, when we remove the number formatting, the number underneath, that's the hundreds and that's the thousands. That means if we want to round to the ones position, we have to remember it's the hundreds and count on our fingers for round one, two. We'd have to put a two if we want to round to the ones position or the percentage point position or round to the nearest percent. If we wanted to round to the tenths of a percent, we'd have to think about the underlying thousands position or count on your fingers one, two, three, and put a three into round. Now let's go over to percentage point. We are given a formatted percent like this. The absolute key is to remember what is underneath. If you want, off to the side while you're learning how to do this, please select the number, go up to number, click the drop down, and apply our eraser for number formatting. In fact, you can do this off to the side. So once you see, oh yeah, I need to round to that 5, then you can see the same thing but underneath. There's the decimal, 1, 2, so we'd have to round to the 2 using the round function. Again, the problem comes with the language that's communicated to us, round to the nearest percentage point or round to the nearest percent. The percent looks like that. If that's the position we want to round to, you always got to look underneath. Now remember, number formatting is what we see on the surface. It's the facade. Formulas like the round function do not see the number formatting. Formulas see the actual number underneath the number formatting. So if I want to round to the nearest percentage point or nearest percent equals, well, I got to use round. And for the number, I'm going to select the cell with my percentage, comma, and I'm rounding to the percentage point. So I look at the underlying number, 1, 2. I type a 2, close parentheses, control, enter. And that's the correct way to round to the percentage point. Let's go over to tenth of a percent. Here, same thing. Don't get tricked. Click in the cell or off to the side or something. Apply general. Always look at the underlying number. In this case, someone communicates round to the nearest tenth of a percentage point or round to the nearest tenth of a percent. There's the decimal for the formatted version. That's the tenths position. But remember, that's the surface, so we have to look underneath. Counting one, two, three, 
Oh, yes, that's the position right there. This is what we see. Formulas will not see that. Formulas see the underlying number. So when I come down here and it's communicated to us round to the nearest tenth of a percentage point or nearest tenth of a percent, no problem equals round for the number. I click on the cell with the percentage comma. I'm counting one, two, three. There it is. So I have to put a three when I'm going to the tenth of a percent. Close parentheses and enter. And that is properly rounded to the tenth of a percent. Now, those are two examples. Let's go look at a great real world example. I'm going to click on the sheet, stock gain. Now, here are some stocks. And stocks are just companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon. You can actually go out and buy a stock, which is one share of ownership. Now, these examples are straight from Yahoo Finance with real numbers, the actual stock value one month ago, and the stock value today. But I want to start off with two made up stock examples, because we want to learn about a change in value formula and a rate of change formula. Then we'll see how to round to a hundredth of a percent. Now, when we say change in value, that means stock ABC. On 12 29 2017, we bought the stock one share for a hundred bucks. And then, the stock market on 129 2018 valued that same stock that I just paid a hundred bucks for one month ago. It's valued today at $110. Now, what we want to do is figure out how much the stock value changed. Now, sometimes you'll hear it communicated as change in value or amount of change. Well, anytime we're calculating change in value, it doesn't matter if the change is up or down, positive or negative. You always take whatever the end amount is and subtract the begin amount. So let's do that. Equals left arrow, that's the ending amount. And from that, I'm going to subtract left arrow, the begin amount. Now I'm going to hit the tab key. Now, I picked a simple example for our first example. We can do this one in our head. It went up by 10 bucks. Now, we want to calculate something called rate of change or percent of change or percent change. Also, because this is a stock example, finance refers to this as rate of return. Now, rate of change just means however much it changed compared to where it started. So you ready? We're going to do this making a fraction or using division. The change in value divided by the begin amount. Now, when I control Enter, what that tells us is for every $1, our stock increased by 10 cents. If we go ahead and format this, and I'm going to use the number group drop down percentage with two decimals. Click. Now it's communicating how many parts out of 100. That means it increased the rate of change, percent change or rate of return. It increased 10 parts for every 100 parts. Now we're talking money here, right? So that means we got 10 pennies for every 100 pennies. That's a pretty good return. Now let's go ahead and do our Change in value for stock DEF started at 100. We bought it on 1229. Oh, and the stock market values it at 90 bucks. It went down. Well, the great thing about a problem where the change in value is an increase or when the change in value is a decrease, the formula is exactly the same. Equal sign, I'm going to left arrow, it's always the end amount, and we subtract where we started or the begin amount. When I hit tab, well, we could have done that one in our head also. Down by 10 bucks. Now, our formula for rate of change or percent change, it's the same. Equals whatever the change in value is, doesn't matter if it's plus or minus, divided by where we started. So I got change in value divided by begin. Control Enter. 
Ooh, that's a minus. We don't like that. We'd much rather have our investments go up. But that happens sometimes. What does it mean? We lost 10 pennies for every $1 that we invested. Now, how did I know that it was 10 pennies down for every $1 invested? Well, let's remember back to ratios in video 12. If I take our formula, change in value divided by begin stock value, either for the increase or decrease example, if I keep the units, 10 divided by 100, well, I'm left with 10 pennies for every $1. That means 10 pennies up in value for every $1 originally invested. For the decrease problem, oh, minus 10 divided by 100. But if I keep the units and the 1 in the denominator, minus 10 pennies down for every $1. Or more specifically, minus 10 pennies down in value for every $1 originally invested. That keep the units and the 1 in the denominator will always help reveal the meaning of whatever division or ratio or rate that you are calculating. Now we can format this as a percent. Click the drop down two decimals. And now it tells us that we lost 10 parts for every 100 parts we put in. The rate of change or percent of change, minus 10%. This one was positive 10%. Now we can calculate the rest. Real numbers, I went out to Yahoo Finance, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, GE Target, and Caterpillar. The formula for change in value or amount of change equals always the end amount minus the begin amount. Control-Enter, we like that. Double-click and send it down. Wow, over this one month period, that's a lot of hefty changes. The only one that went down is GE. Now we can calculate our rate of change or percent change. Now the nice thing about rate of change or percent of change is that these are dollar amounts and it's hard to compare. But once we convert it to a rate of change or percent of change or even a rate of return, all synonyms for the same thing, it'll tell us how many pennies for every $1. Then it's easy to compare amongst all of these which one got us the most pennies for every $1 invested. So you ready? Equals rate of change as always. Change in value divided by where we started, or our begin amount. Control Enter. Wow, that's a lot of decimals there. Double click and send it down. Even just looking at this, this rate of change, we can definitely see about 12 pennies for every $1. About 9 or 10, of depending on where we round it. Wow, look at Amazon, 21 pennies. Now, let's highlight the entire column. I want to add percentage number formatting. But I'm going to use Control-1, Percentage, and increase, let's say, five decimals. Click OK. Now we are expressing parts for every 100. About 21 parts, about 12 parts for every 100. And we know, of course, the 100 parts we're talking about are pennies. Now, our goal is to round this to the nearest hundredth of a percent. All right, so I'm going to look at this one right here. That 2 right there, that's the percentage point position or percent position. The 3, that's the tenths. The 4, that's the hundredths. So that's the position we want to round to. Now, if you're not sure, here's a trick. Come over to the side, equal sign. I'm going to click on that cell, Control Enter. It pulls the number formatting, but no problem. I can wipe it away with the general. Double click and send it down will not work because there's nothing to the left, to the right, or below. So I'm going to have to drag this one. Now, I'm picking this one. I've already decided I need the 4 right there, so I'm counting on my fingers. 1, 2, 3, 4. Without the formatting, it's easy to pick the correct position to use in round. So now I come up to the top, F2. Now I round after the equal sign, as we've seen so many times in this class. Number, that's almost always some formula. 
come to the end, comma, number of digits, we type a 4, close parentheses, control enter, double click and send it down. And that is beautiful. We have 12.35%, 9.8, 21.22. Now I want to come to the last cell and hit F2. Make sure those cell references are looking good. Actually, I didn't do that over here. Either F2, that change in value formula, is looking good. Now when we look through this, normally we would decrease the decimals, right? I'm going to highlight all of these. It was convenient for us as we're learning to show many decimals so we can see that the round function worked. But of course, we could increase or decrease as we see fit. I'm going to leave it like that. Now, look at this. We created rate of change, percent of change, or rate of return, number of pennies. Well, even though Target only gave us 1155 total amount of change, for every $1, we got 17.7 .7 pennies. But of course, Amazon was the one with the most pennies per $1. All right, now there are some homework problems over here four awesome homework problems. And in this video, we definitely saw how to round percentages. We saw how to round to the hundredth of a percent. On this sheet, we saw a great stock market example. And we learned change in value and rate of change formula. We'll see lots more of that throughout the next couple of weeks. Back on, back on tenths of a percent, of course, we saw how to round to a tenth of a percent, making sure to use three in round. Over here on percentage point, if you're rounding to the percentage point, be sure to use 2 in round. And of course, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun, including next video, video number 20. We'll talk about the famous percent formula. All right, we'll see you next video.